Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. I'm here with a good friend of mine, or slowly becoming a good friend, uh, Lin Femi. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, and uh, he and I did a collaboration on what is a shakuhachi. And uh, so I wanted to bring him on because he actually is doing a lot of really important stuff with uh, Japanese culture and Japanese history. So Lin Femi, thank you so much for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, I love the work that uh, we were doing on that previous video. So uh, thanks for contacting me and getting all that uh, sorted up and everything. Yeah, and we have a couple more projects coming up too that uh, people are, can can look forward to uh, more. All we always about music. That's the what I know best about. Uh, okay. But and we'll we'll keep that a secret because uh, some of them I haven't even told you about yet either. So okay. <laughs> so how did you how did you get into all of this and um, specifically with retelling this like this Japanese history story and in this kind of animated version? So uh, it actually started as a hobby. So I had a day job and uh, I was a software engineer. So I wanted something to do uh, as a hobby on the side because I didn't want to work the entire day and 24 seven because that's what I was doing beforehand. Um, so I was, I think I was looking up on YouTube uh, some history videos, history about ancient Japanese culture and things like that. And I couldn't find, I actually couldn't find a lot of information on that. There's a lot of information on the Sengoku and um, the Meiji era and mo uh, modern Japan, but there actually, I couldn't find a lot on ancient Japan. So that was a shame, I thought. And I was like, hey, I can do research. Um, I can draw. Okay, I think I'm funny. I know no one else thinks so, but I think I'm funny. Um, <laughs> I think you're so, funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sean. So um, yeah, so I, I started doing it as a hobby. And at first, I was just playing around. So if you if you watch my previous like my very early videos, it was just me messing around a lot, doing skits and stuff like that. Um, so I started doing that, and it became like uh it kind of consumed me so i had a lot of, i had a few months at work where i was being very unproductive <laughs> mm -hmm. i would be at the computer and i would be <clears throat> just thinking like okay what should i do for the next video um what should, what should the next topic be and things like that right so uh it started consuming more and more of my time and i finally uh had to go talk to my um manager and say uh, and ask them for a uh, a leave of absence uh, from work right so uh so they they granted me that and i'm, I'm actually technically i'm i'm still with the company but i'm on i'm on leave right now so uh so out of that i started doing it full time mm -hmm. um and i started having a schedule right so before it was very um random when when I would upload, right? So you see mm -hmm. gaps of uh, a month or two months between uploads, but um, yeah, after I I uh, got on the leave of absence, I uh, started doing a schedule, and now it's uh, uh, it's once a week on Saturdays, <clears throat> and yeah, so I just started uh, buying books uh, on ancient Japanese history and reading up and doing research and all that good stuff. So yeah, and, that's how I got started. How long have you been on a leave of absence? Uh, about a year and a half. A year and oh a half. my god! <laughs> <laughs> and so, so most of the time, that, so this is this is your job now is just YouTube and. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, um, that's, that's I, so I'm, cool. I'm hoping it can be something uh, permanent because, um, yeah, uh, right right now I'm trying to get it to something that's sustainable. Mm-hmm. So actually, you know, I have a lot of my own books too, uh, like the, you know, Sengoku Kuchi Dai and like, you know, these, uh -huh. th these thick tomes of yeah. <laughs> books yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, there's so many of them. And, you know, that, that part of the research is, is really difficult. And, um, you know, one of the things that there is actually a lot of um, history videos online, but they're in Japanese. And yeah. in that Japanese too, is also very, very sometimes it's very difficult to understand and so even when i'm watching it and i'm going through it and I'm like, i go wait 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 wait, go back 30 seconds right what is this word and i have to look on the dictionary and i can't even find it and that's because it's an archaic term that's no longer used anymore 
So it, it's really is quite, um, quite, quite taxing. But so now that you, now you've gone up to the Sengoku period, you're right into uh, the... Well, this is right at the end of the Heian period. Oh, that's where you're, So you just finished with the uh, Genpei Wars? Uh, not yet, not yet. So I haven't okay. reached there yet. Um, but we're, we're getting there, I think. We're getting awesome. There. Now, how many videos do you have um, done in advance, like already? Like, do you already have things that are set up for like the next three months or? Uh, zero. Oh, <laughs> so zero. so, so right it does. Now, it's one video a week, and um, I do, I do, yeah, it takes, it takes me a whole week to do a video. So actually, I want to have a, um, a buffer of a couple of videos, but mm -hmm. haven't gotten to that point yet. And so the each video is somewhere between six to twelve minutes in length. Um, how long does it take in terms of hours of actual editing and stuff to to make a full video? Um, so uh, maybe I just tell you the process, right? Yeah, sure, sure, uh, please. Uh, so it's first it's the research and then uh, writing a script, and then um, narration, and then uh, the drawing and editing, right? So that's kind of four, uh, four steps. So the, the research probably takes um, anywhere from one or two days of work, and that's about, uh, I work about eight to 12 hours a day, depending, mm -hmm. right? So uh, that's one or two days for the research. Um, the narration can take an hour or two, and um, the the drawing and editing takes up the rest of the time. I think that's the that's the it takes up the most time, the drawing and the editing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so that that takes a whole week already. Um, I'm trying to get it to a point where it's it's uh, less than that. And I actually have some really like there uh, there's Tercero. Um, uh, one of the viewers who actually did research for some of the videos and he, he did research for uh, some of the future videos that we're going to do too. So hmm. that that's really helpful. Um, yeah, that it is really helpful when you have, um, so even like for, for me that on the video that I did for you, I did all the research and the narration and got you all the, the pictures and stuff. So yeah. uh, you had an easy week for that one where it yeah, was yeah. just, and, yeah. Yeah. Now, and there's, there's another user who, who just uh, offered to, who uh, offered to do a, uh, uh, research for a couple, a couple other videos. So, I mean, I mean, the viewers are actually really nice, and I, I love talking to them and, mm -hmm. and everything. So, yeah. yeah, and I think that you know, there's so you know, your channel now has over a hundred thousand subscribers, which you should do a uh, you should do like a reveal of some sort, like some sort, like maybe you're like, <laughs> I don't know, some sort of uh, reveal video, like a face reveal. Yeah, I, <laughs> well. This this won't be out for a while, so maybe you can do a face reveal before this. Uh... Oh well, well, uh, there's a secret. <laughs> uh, my previous, like the the beginning videos, they they have my face in it. Oh but okay. I did, I did skits. <laughs> oh, that's right. I remember now because I've I, I've actually have Very seen, similar. I've seen every single uh, video for the history of Japan. I've the, those I've seen all of them. And I've seen most of the ones that are um, like ninja myths. And then I've seen some yeah. of your other special guests who have come on your channel as well. Yeah. So yeah, you have a lot of content on there and uh, it, it's really fantastic. Is there, is there something that you have a goal with that you really want to try to do that you haven't done on this channel yet? Hmm. Maybe. Uh, so I've, been looking into doing live um what do you what are those called like a live stream it's not like a live stream mm -hmm. yeah yeah maybe that but I, i'm not sure the thing is there's a lot of information and i don't have it all in my head you don't you know what i mean yeah so, yeah it's very those kind of things it's very hard to just keep it in your head and then just spew it out when like when someone asks the question i'm not sure if i would know the answer to that mm -hmm. um yeah you know, there's a um, there's there is definitely a huge difference between the scholar and then like the artistic creator, right? And and yeah. I wouldn't consider myself a scholar on on Japanese music or aesthetics in general. Um, it's just something that I've I would probably say aesthetics. I'm much more of a scholar than I am on Japanese music, and it's but it's interesting though when I do have um, 
like concerts, whether they're in Japan or they're in America, or I'm doing a lecture at a college and people start asking me about things, I'm actually surprised of how much I actually knew about that topic. And, and this is what I think happens for people. And it's a really weird psychological phenomenon. When we start learning about a topic, we feel like we know a lot about it because the amount of information we have is so small that it encapsulates, like it makes it feel like yeah. this. Yeah. Then as we get, we learn more and more, we're, we're compacting all this information and, and then we feel like, oh my God, I don't know anything about this because there's so much. Right. And then, but in reality, you really are quite um, you know, informed on a lot of these topics. Um, have you heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect? Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of what you're talking about, right? Because at yeah. the beginning, you think you're very smart. You think you yes. know a lot of stuff. <laughs> but then once you start studying and all, getting all this information, you're like, oh my God, I really don't know a lot. But before, I thought I was, uh, I thought I was an expert, but you know. Yeah, so I, I'm sure that you actually do a quite a, a quite a good job. And I think you'd be surprised at some of the questions that people would ask. I don't think it, a lot of them would have anything to do with Japanese history. I think they just would want to talk oh. to you. So <laughs> maybe. maybe, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's been a really fun ride so far, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this YouTube thing, it's so it's such a new thing. You know, five years ago, uh, what, five, ten years ago, there, being a YouTuber is not, wasn't a, an option, right? It wasn't a bit, wasn't a, like a good option for, for everyone. But now yeah. with the, the advertising money and all, and how YouTube has grown, it's become an actual, uh, like, if you wanted to do something, if you wanted to make videos, uh, uh, do something about any topic that you like you can just put it out there. you can just put it out there right and, and there will be people who watch and right? you know what what really stopped me from starting in the first place was i thought no no one's going to be interested and i'm going to put in all of this time and so you know i was making i started making shakachi tutorial videos and the first couple of them are like really bad because i have like <laughs> no editing skills and then they started getting better and better and now they have some whatever and then I started doing the interviews and then I started adding this other thing and I started adding performances. And then before I knew it, you know, stuff started building up and it's, it's one of those things that I wish I would have started a lot earlier mm -hmm. because I think that it could have, it could already be a lot bigger. And I started looking at other, you know, YouTube channels, both in Japanese and in English to try to find who has really in-depth um, Shakachi tutorials. Okay. There is like, zero and right. then i i went off and i looked okay well who has interviews with shakachi players okay the only thing i can find are like five minute you know big news channel clips which are basically hi who are you oh i'm so and so oh you play the flute yeah i do good where can people find you they can find me oh commercial break and then <laughs> so it that's that was like okay there needs to be a long form interview to talk about japanese culture to to talk to show people to give them an avenue to find other places and uh, find other people because i'm sure that somebody might have might have watched a video of me doing an interview of a performer and then saying like oh my god i'm from denmark and that person lives in denmark i can study in person with this with this master and i didn't even know that they lived here and so then it just creates a bridge for people to receive information mm -hmm. i really i really believe that whatever you put out there's going to be someone who wants to watch it okay you're going to resonate with someone even if mm. it's just your personality and it's not even your content some people are going to like what you uh, there are people who are going to like what you put out so i think um yeah right now is a really interesting time um and, and i think anyone can just build a following um, yeah yeah and then there's a lot of people who right now they say oh youtube is way too big now uh there's there's no there's no room for new creators to come come in and just uh create their own audience but i don't think that's true i think mm -hmm. i don't know i think we're just at the beginning um uh right right now yeah you you really can't like if you wanted to have a channel where it's just general knowledge like you know a general entertainment channel or something like that uh that i think that is hard that is hard because there's a lot of people who do like history videos, right? There's yeah. a lot of people who do history videos. 
Um, there's a lot of people who do uh, war history, like military history. But mm -hmm. if you kind of niche down and you keep going down lower and lower and lower, right? And you go into, okay, now it's Japanese history, but not just Japanese history, uh, ancient Japanese history. Or uh, uh, in the music field, you can go, uh, you can say, you have a, a channel about music in general, but I don't think that's going to do well. But mm -hmm. if you niche down like what you did uh, with the Shakuhachi videos, then yeah, there's, a, there's an audience for that, right? And, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of people doing that. So I think there's a lot of little niches that you just need to find. And then you, you, uh, from that, you will build a, a bigger audience than, I don't know, than people realize. Yeah, there's like, a, I think when you think of the original, like I think when people think of YouTube videos and they think of YouTubers, they think of some of like the old school people um, who did have like a, a wider reach of topics that they could grab. So one of, one of the video uh, people that I used to subscribe to a long time ago was Vsauce. And the, you know, they used to have, a, he used to do an insane amount of videos on a variety of topics. But then as the, as the channel was growing and as they had more people, what they decided to do was, okay, now we're, I'm going to hone in and I'm going to make Vsauce this one specific thing, which is me about topics that I want to talk about. Then they created Vsauce 2.0 and then they created Vsauce 3.0, which uh, 3.0 was ended up being about a lot about video games and uh, stuff like that. So then people started to not only just follow Vsauce, but they followed these other two things right. because they liked some of the topics that they were doing in Vsauce original, but they didn't do it all the time. So then they hopped over to there, which created more loyal following and, and whatever. So I do agree with that idea of, you know, you're doing this one thing, which is Japanese hist ancient history, mm -hmm. histor history of different parts of, and different aspects of Japan. Now, theoretically speaking this could go on forever and ever and ever but there will be a point when you know you get you get to the modern day and you start talking about recent history and stuff like that um and let's say that you've you kind of you kind of just exhausted it to the point where you're like all right i've i've done what needed to be done i've said the things i wanted to say what's going to come next so i want to reframe that question because i don't think uh, I don't think we're going to run out of, con uh, of history, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, uh, after a while, we may, uh, I like, so the channel may get to uh, the modern era, but I think that's mm -hmm. really far down the line. Sure, sure. Um, before that, before even that, um, uh, there are other topics that you, you can do um, that's related to history, but that's not the actual events that happen, right? You know, topics, mm -hmm. like questions like, um, uh, I don't know, why were Japanese castles made out of wood, right? And all mm -hmm. of those kinds of things. Uh, I think we can, there's a lot of topics that you can cover. It's, uh, I, you, can't, you can't really run out, right? Because mm -hmm. we have people who's, who are doing um, medieval history and stuff. Do they run out of content? Uh, they don't, right? There's mm -hmm. just so many questions that, people want to know about i was thinking i was thinking more in just like the when you're as you're you have these kind of like a general over or like not like a you almost kind of have like a moment in time review sort of thing like this actual history of japan thing that's now up to 50 some odd videos correct yeah and so if, as you can keep progressing with that timeline once this particular series ends mm -hmm. are you just going to go back and start doing more specific events that uh, I see. I think uh, I think uh, if we get to the modern age, and I don't, I don't know where I'm going to stop. Um, like, would I would I stop 20 years before now or whatever? But mm -hmm. uh, if we get to that point, uh, and I would love it if we got to that point. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we get to that point, then I think I would do more topics, more like, uh, hey, give, I'll ask the audience, hey, give me your questions. What do you want to know about? Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, We'll just have videos answering those questions. I think that's going to be, I, we can probably start that now, yeah. actually. But yeah, I think that's, I, I think those videos actually do better than mm -hmm. the, the general history videos from what I've seen. From what mm -hmm. I think. Um, yeah, so I think that's what we're going to do. You know, it's really interesting though. Um, I'm, a, I'm a sort of person that I'm a binge watcher. And when I first discovered your videos, I started right from the beginning and I just went all the way through for like a week straight, just nice. watching as every single, every single video as much as I could. 
And I think that even going up into the modern era, it would be something, this is something I wish I would have had when I was doing Japanese history in college. Because it, it's really, really helpful. And it's very informative. And it's the, you know, you chose really great content because I actually knew um, pre-modern Japan. I knew about that book before it, uh, before I saw your channel and stuff. And it was something that I did read. But going through and having like this, um, and it's not even like a Spark Notes version. It's so much better. It's uh, a really nice view of that time period. And it really helps to have the animate, animations along with it because you get much more of a sense of what it was like. Um, and it, it sticks a lot better than reading for me. So I forgot where I was going to go with this, but I knew I was going to go somewhere. <laughs> but I think going all the way up, even like past Edo through Showa, through World War II, I think is still would be very, very, very good. You know, kind of creating this full thing. Now, of course, that's years down the line because of how much, especially in the Edo period, we have a lot more writing and a lot more information, though it's kind of like they, they call it the Edo period 250 years of no change, but a lot happened in that time period. So I think it'd be really, really interesting to see how you go all the way to, you know, maybe up to the Dewa. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and the more we go forward in time, um, the more uh, the more books there are, the more research there is uh, about uh, everything, right? So, yeah, I mean, it's gotten easier the more uh, um, the more videos I make because I, I, I keep moving forward in time. And like the Asian times, you didn't have that much information, right? It's not, but we don't. We don't know exactly uh, where the first Japanese came from. Okay, we have some idea, but mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as we move forward in time, there's a uh, I, I've noticed that there's a lot more more research. What are some of the questions that like that you wish you could um, that you could answer? Like as you're reading through this topic about ancient Japan, what are some of the things you're like? I wonder. Hmm. Well, there's a question of uh, Queen Himiko, and we don't know who she was, right? We there's a so all we have are are um, all we have are documents, Chinese documents from uh, from I forgot which dynasty was there at the time, but they I think it was the Sui Dynasty, um, or no? But anyways, I don't. Uh, we only have documents from the Chinese that are uh, tell us about this queen that's um, in Japan, and uh, she's. A, they tell us that she's a leader and everything, but we don't really know what she was. And and these are documents that are from outsiders, so they may not be accurate, right? So they mm -hmm. may be just looking at at it from a Chinese point of view, and uh, we don't really know what kind of leader she was. Was she a real leader, or was she um, a religious leader? Or did it make any difference? Was the, the religious leader actually the real leader, the way they mm -hmm. saw it, right? And who actually ran the country and things like that. A lot of those ancient history I'm very interested in. But um, yeah, but it's a shame that we don't have a lot of information on that because they, did, they didn't write at the time. Like, uh, the Japanese didn't have a written language at the time. So all we could rely on were these Chinese documents. That's yeah. Like, and and actually, that's it, a it's a really good point because Japanese were illiterate for uh, most Japanese were illiterate for a very long time, except for nobles. And uh, one of the ways that um, Japanese people were to were able to learn about history were actually through storytelling through blind monks called mosul, mm -hmm. and they would play um, biwa and tell stories of you know different events. So one of the most famous stories is the uh, Heike Monogatari, and so the way that people knew about the uh, Genpei War was through these blind priests that would come through and, and play songs. So it it's also begs the, the question of how much did these things change over time um, mm -hmm. as well? Because we, when we look at Indian, Indian history and how they tell stories, um, like recitations of entire um, books like the Bhagavad Gita, and how much it hasn't changed between one person to the next because of how much that culture is based on memorization. So it, 
and and because Japan is very similar to China, they looked up to China for a very long time, and they have uh, the same sort of testing and memorization culture. We have to keep that in mind as well. But it's it, that's a really great uh, question in general, and and stuff. And I also wonder about like the first um, Tenno-sama, the first uh, emperors of Japan as well, and. Were they real people, or were they just kind of like this fictional thing that people, like one guy in a in a village one day just came up with this idea of I'm going to create this uh, fictional character, just because there's nothing else to do, and then right. it caught on, and then boom, you have this full thing. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of things about uh, uh, like these um, these uh, the Heike Monogatari and um, all of these uh, fictional histories, I guess, I guess you can call them, right? Mm -hmm. They're, they're written by the victors, right? You don't really know what actually happened. It, it, would be, it would be great if we had some, we had a time machine to go back and see, okay, are these key players in these stories, are they, were they the actual key play players, right? Mm -hmm. Or were they just, uh, or did we just exaggerate their accomplishments after the fact? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really interesting. I, I wish we had a time machine that we can go back. And yeah, actually, see what really happened. Another really interesting thing too is also how people talked back in back in that time too. Like the actual Japanese language would be completely unrecognizable yes. to modern. And I, and I think a lot of times even English speakers don't realize that if we went back a thousand years, you would not be able to understand a lick of English. It is it has changed so dramatically that it's it is a separate language. Definitely. So. Now, what about the 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 difficulty of because uh, you you don't speak Japanese? I, I know that a lot, a lot of people ask you that question all the time, and you go, "Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, no." And uh, yeah. does that cause um, some difficulty in the research and um, digging in and stuff like that, or is it is there enough in English that doesn't cause uh -huh. that problem? Well, I definitely wish I do speak uh, Japanese and mm -hmm. read Japanese because there's there's a lot of actually there's a lot of Japanese research that we go into, but uh, but I can't right. But I mean, there's there, there are a lot of great um, uh, English uh, Japanese history uh, writers, right? Like Carl Friday. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, uh, I get the research that I get from them from reading their books, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's all I can work with now. And I think mm -hmm. they, they, do a, they, do, they do a great job. Um, obviously, I wish that I could read Japanese and uh, go into the, the actual uh, research from Japanese researchers um, that are not translated. But I mean, it, it seems to work fine so far. And the thing is, uh, with the audience for the channel, they're mostly um, non-Japanese, right? Yeah, so they're, they're mostly uh, people from other countries, and uh, a lot of a lot of this stuff they they really didn't know about. So mm -hmm. all of this information is new to them. So mm -hmm. I think I think that's um, uh, that's the one of the goals of the channel is mm -hmm. to spread uh, the Japanese history and culture to uh, people who are not Japanese, right? People who don't know about this stuff and are interested. Right? Yeah, because in Japanese, yeah, you, you know your history, and you can. Uh, read up on your history, but all, everyone else, they really don't know, right? You they know, really it's interesting that you say that, though, because, um, uh, so even watching your videos, and I'm somebody who has researched a lot about Japanese history, there's still lots of things that in your videos I didn't know, mm -hmm. and so I've learned a lot, and when I do go to Japan, and I am talking with my friends, and they, they'll, they'll ask, a, like, they'll ask something, like, uh, about Japanese history as it pertains to Shakuhachi and where it came from. And so I'll start talking about the Heian court and how things like work systematically and some of the rules and like regulations and legislation that was involved. And they go, none they did it. <laughs> like, why do you know this? And, <laughs> they, and then they'll, they'll, they'll say like, um, I'm like, what did you, did you not know this? And they go, oh, kito. this is the first time I've heard of this. <laughs> so, and, um, and it's, it's amazing that actually, but it, it's so, to, to take it back into a circle, if you were to ask me things about like Civil War time in in America, there are things I know mm -hmm. about it that are very just surface level. But I'm sure there are Japanese people that could tell me about the Civil War, and I'd go, I had no idea. Right. Like, oh my God, that that happened there at that point. 
that person even existed. And, right. and so I think that, you know, history is one of those things that you do have to study no matter where you're from. And a lot of us really don't know history because there's so much of it. And as you've said multiple times, um, it's written by the victor. So we don't always get 100% clear vision of it. You know, hindsight's always twenty twenty when it's your story. But then when it's somebody else's, you're looking through their lens of how they want to say it. So they might be blurring the glasses in order to just show one lens. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, so that's, that's the goal with the channel, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, yeah, it's for people who want to learn about, about Japanese history. And, and I think even now, um, a lot of the information is, uh, it's not as detailed as it could be. Right, there are a lot. There are a lot more levels that you can go underneath uh, what's on the channel right now, and I think that's that's all the also the point of the channel, is to have to give people this information right that they can later on use to go uh, go further right, if they wanted to, right? If they're interested enough, they they'll, they can watch a video and they go, oh, uh, oh, what about Queen Himiko? Uh, what I maybe I want to learn more about her, so they'll go mm -hmm. off on their um, internet. Uh, black hole oh yes so yeah i think that that's a that's a good point and maybe that it doesn't maybe this channel doesn't need to do that because your what your videos do is inspires people to do their own individual research to go deeper on topics that they're specifically interested in yeah because the videos are what eight to twelve minutes right not even mm -hmm. twelve so yeah around that that time and that's really not enough time to go delve like deep into an issue right into events and stuff and yeah it, so one of the videos that i i want to do with you in the future is actually about biwa because it is a, it's one of the the oldest traditions that have that continued on with with popularity in japan all the way up until the meiji restoration and as i was like you know doing my own research and writing things up and whatever i i hit a 10 minute mark of what i would be able to say and i'm like oh my god i didn't even go into chikuzen biwa and I'm like, oh my, there's like, there's this entire thing, like two major sections of, of Biwa history that I didn't even talk about. And, you know, even the same thing with Shakachi too, there was so much that I left out, like unbelievable amounts. And, you know, there, there are people that, um, because I, I shared it in a bunch of Shakachi communities, they'd go through, it's like, why didn't you talk about this? And like time limits, well, why didn't you talk about this? You missed this. It's important to mention this. And like, yes, those things are all important, but <laughs> time limit <laughs> we yeah. gotta you gotta pick and choose and it didn't fit the storyline of what i wanted to write so this it's like a you're you're gonna please like 95 percent of people with the story but then the five percent of people that do know something about that like oh my god why didn't you tell them about this this is such an important part and it's so interesting and blah 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 yeah, welcome to my world sean because yeah. that's what i deal with all the time right because you have these books these gigantic books and these gigantic chapters all yes, about these like events, the people right? need to look this is this is one small period in time this book and it's probably this is one of a three volume set about the sengoku period so i mean and this is just about nobunaga hideyoshi and ieyasu the and this mm -hmm. is just about the unification of japan this yeah. is the unification and this is so that's a very short time period in sengoku and it's you know it's insanity like how much has been written and you know i can't even read that in like three weeks if I read every single day mm -hmm. that's going to take me about a, a, like a month or two um, of solid reading and that's a lot more than eight minutes so <laughs> yeah and with internet commenters you know they they will call you out on everything right yeah so <laughs> if you miss if you're missing something they will call you out on it and and, and that's and that's why in our upcoming video the um gagaku video with uh, so uh, japanese court music um i actually went out to one of my friends who's a professor and asked him about it and say okay i need to read this to you and tell me if there's anything that i need to change the wording on and he would find that this one he would find one little thing he'd say it's not you shouldn't use this word you should use this word instead because this is in this is saying that you know everybody was a part of it and this is saying that most people were a part of it. And, and that, that sort of delineation is really important in a lot of those videos is you can, you can kind of change the words a little bit to, you know, make the meaning a little bit more vague and, you know, cover yourself from like those sort of comments. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think in general, uh, what people should know about, um, you know, just online videos and things like that, things that you read online. Okay, you can't, it's, you can't trust every single detail, right? So yeah. it's, uh, it, you have to do your research uh, like, um, afterwards, right? So, mm -hmm. so I think with my videos, the, the thing is, yeah, I try to do, uh, try to be as accurate as possible, but you, you do always make mistakes, right? So mm -hmm. I, I, I view my videos as a window into, uh, for further research, right? So here's, here's the general information that, mm -hmm. uh, that you can have for these, uh, these events uh, in Japanese history. And uh, if you want to know more about it, then you can actually look into the research, right? And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have, I, yeah, I have had people call out uh, the videos on uh, certain things that I got wrong. And I try to make corrections to those as much as possible. Yeah. And, and I think the other thing that's, you know, most pertinent is that we're, we're people and we're not perfect and we're going to make mistakes and we, we misspeak and we don't even catch it and, uh, or whatever. And then we, we upload the video and it's an easy fix. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, I got that wrong. Okay. Here's it corrected. Uh, but then there, there are the people who just like to keep nailing down the point <laughs> and just like, no, you got this one thing wrong. You mm -hmm. were, you were right. 99.99% of the time, but that 0.01% really irked me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's people like that. But you know what? So, That's the internet. I mean, and it's good too. It's good too, because hey, they, they keep, they keep you honest. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And it's really great to have that feedback too. Um, so I, I certainly learned a, a lot of, a lot from the commenters. Um, mm -hmm. They're actually really knowledgeable. Uh, people watching the video so yeah i appreciate that too yeah there's a, a lot of radio shows that i listen to um as well because i have to drive a lot being here in texas mm -hmm. and uh the a lot of times those radio hosts when they do have like informative stations that are, are debate stages mm -hmm. they uh they they're the audience members will call in a lot and a lot of times like there was one time they were talking about um space exploration and a guy from nasa actually called in to correct some of them. And it's like that, that sort of research of the public forum is invaluable. So they, yeah. those people who do have the knowledge and you know, there's a way of saying it where you can be more polite about it and just saying like, you're effing wrong, man. You're always wrong. Like that, okay, not appropriate. But then there's the way of, hey, really enjoyed the video. There's one little thing though, this little part here, it's actually this instead. And then you go, oh, that, that, that makes more sense now. Thank you for the correction, but you know, civility on the internet when you have <laughs> anonymi an anonymity is yeah. uh, non-existent. Yeah. No pro tip: like if you want to give someone some advice, do it nicely. Don't yell. <laughs> right. If you insult them, then they're not going to listen to your advice. <laughs> now, have you gotten hate mail? Uh, hate mail, like emails? No. Okay. Um, I've gotten hate mail. Yes. Oh, hate you got hate comments. A lot, <laughs> a lot, especially, especially, um, I had an early video about the, the first people who came to Japan, uh, to Japan, the Japanese archipelago. Mm. And there are, you know, there's Japanese nationalists, um, yes, of people who disagree and they were very vocal. They were very I'm vocal. Sure. Yeah. So we had, I think we had five fights between Japanese people and, uh, Korean actually <laughs> that's Isn't never it? okay that's never gonna end i mean <laughs> so they it it's it's a it was a whole thing in the comment section i mean After i think a certain point i stopped with the comments that should be uh that should be another topic um is why why there's so much beef between korea and japan i mean i understand um, yeah and, but, and so you're vietnamese correct yes and yes. do you speak do you speak vietnamese uh i do i do um, not as well as my parents would like, but mm -hmm. uh, I do. You, then you can do a Vietnamese voice reveal. So a hundred thousand. Uh, uh, you haven't done that yet. Like speak Vietnamese. Yep. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But no one would understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you can put in subtitles. <laughs> just as a, just at a random. Just yep. You start talking in Vietnamese. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I, I, I would enjoy that. So, uh, yeah, and then you can come up with a, your 200,000 because you're going to hit it. You're going to get 200,000. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, the thing with uh, YouTube is um, I don't think that subscriber matters, that subscriber number matters that much after a certain point. Um, yeah, not at all. 
Yeah, yeah. It's so more think- about, um, I mean, and this is definitely something for the viewers to know, that it's the amount of the video that you watch. And if you skip through stuff, the, the YouTuber gets paid less. Um, and so if you also like, if you skip the ad in the beginning, the YouTuber gets paid less as well. So for the YouTubers that I, I know and I like and I watch their content, a lot of times like if there's two ads that get displayed, I'll let them play and I'll be like, well, I do need to get a cup of water. So then I just let it play, I leave and I come back and then I watch the video, even, you know, whatever, I'm not that much of a rush. You know, what's a couple extra seconds to wait for the video to completely finish versus, you know, exiting a little bit, uh, a little bit early. So that that's one thing that, I think people should know about the YouTube algorithm. Yeah. Well, you're a better man than most people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Are they? Yeah. And there's also like the skip 10 second feature on like phones where you can just really get through the video really quickly. The thing is, so that's, um, that's why I think YouTubers should not rely on ads, right? They should try to uh, monetize in other ways. So I'm trying Mm -hmm. to grow Patreon, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's that money is more stable. Because with the ads, it really depends on your views, right? The more yeah. views you have, the the more income you get, and you can have some months where you, your views go down, right? And mm-hmm. it's really low, and you, you can't pay for rent, right? It's yeah. really unstable. So I think, yeah, I think that's the way to go now in the future. Where now a lot there's a lot of a lot of people who have YouTube channels, and they're starting to see that okay, I cannot rely on ads. It's yeah. just it's just way too unstable. So that's why they have Patreon and I don't know uh, books and merch and all this other stuff. Just yeah, them. yeah. I'm waiting for my Coma Soul merch. I can yeah. I also I can sell that at concerts. Yeah, like shirts. Yeah, yeah Coma Soul shirts. Oh my god, dude, people would so buy that. I can see I can see my students buying that stuff too. <laughs> You know, it's, but it, you know, it's interesting that you talk about this, uh, you know, Patreon and musicians actually used to be in, in old Europe and in Japan, they were able to do what they did because they had patrons. So, mm-hmm. so Tokugawa Ieyasu actually really loved Biwa and Biwa was one of the instruments that he sponsored and gave people money so they could go around and just concertize. Um, Mozart himself was actually sponsored by the Hofners and he wrote a symphony for them. And so that's how he was able to make his money to, you know, get drunk and go to the brothel every single night. And he, he, that sort of culture has kind of fallen out of fashion and especially since the age of recording um, for, for musicians. So that struggle, I actually really know well, because I do have some corporate sponsors that, you know, support with buying some of my instruments because of how unbelievably expensive they are and there's other people who say well if you review our products or if you talk about our products or put them in your programs and tell your friends about them we can give you an x amount of money per month as a financial sponsorship which they can then tax deduct so that's sort of the business side of you know being a musician and the business side of being a youtuber is actually really 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 similar because most musicians probably I want to say most musicians cannot have a full career just performing for a long period of time. They'll have to be teaching. They have to do other things on top of that. And a lot of them also have day jobs as well, just like YouTubers do. It doesn't happen right away. You have to, you know, you have to take a lot of risk and some people are not comfortable with that. Yeah. I'm still waiting for the day where I can get get drunk and go to brothels every day. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah. You definitely like you need you need to supplement that uh, YouTube ad income, and I think I don't know. Hopefully, I can get to a point where I don't really care about the YouTube ad income, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I can live off uh, the other stuff. So the the great stuff, the great thing about Patreon now is, uh, unlike unlike a uh, hundred years ago, you don't you don't have to rely on really rich patrons to yeah. to, to support your work, right? It's a lot of small, small dollar donations, um, which is great, I think. So that, that's why I think uh, now is a great time for independent creators. Yeah, and as I'm, I'm just like kind of looking through a couple of people's Patreon right now, and, you know, some people are making like $25,000 a month, you know, for, yeah. for stuff. So, I mean, like they're, they're in, they, they'd be in the top 10% in America Yeah. Um, for, for that. 
And, um, you know, actually the one thing I want to talk about, cause I forgot to mention it earlier, and this, this can be our, our last little bit here is I want to talk about your, your story writing, because that's one thing that you do really well is you do create a quite a great narrative that has a good arc. And, um, you have a, you have a knack for, um, comedy in general, which is you have an idea and you repeat it. You have a repetition that is absolutely hysterical how did you did you is this something that you've just always been able to do naturally with storytelling or did you just kind of write it for yourself because you thought this was funny I mean because that was the one thing that stuck like stuck out in my mind when I first watched your videos was God, like he's a really good storyteller first of all not everyone thinks that <laughs> <laughs> not everyone likes the jokes and they'll tell me about it but um I I think I'm just a uh, jokey guy in general but um, with the storytelling, so I try to, so a lot of the stuff that you read, um, it's pretty dry, right? The history books and stuff. Um, there are some good books, but- You can uh, say that most, again. Most of the time is pretty dry. So mm-hmm. I try to pick out the things, the little points that are, that I think are interesting and leave out all the other stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So there, there would be, for example, uh, names. If you read history books, there are a lot of names, right? And mm-hmm. they'll- don't name everyone <clears throat> that's related to, <clears throat> sorry, don't name everyone that's related to a certain event. And a lot of those people don't really matter, right? So for those people, I'll just leave them out. I don't need to name those people, right? So uh, I'll pick out little details that I think are interesting. Uh, I think um, that people would uh, not normally know, but then they really, really like. So I try to um, uh, go through it like a, like a, a producer in Hollywood where, okay, let's pick out these really important points, um, that re- really interesting points and include all of those in the video and try to leave out a lot of the uh, boring, uh, inconsequential stuff. Of course, mm-hmm. a lot of times you need to include uh, those names and dates and stuff like that. But yeah, so the, the point is just, just create something that's really, um, that's, that's really, uh, that would catch people, right? Because if, at the end of the day, you want people to to keep watching, right? Yeah. To get that information. So if you if you have a lot of dry uh, points that you, you're driving through the the video, then people will just stop watching, and that's that's not conducive uh, for everyone. That's not happy. Uh, that doesn't make anyone happy. Yeah, and I also think you know the the thing that you do really nicely is um, from the topics that I do know more about, and when I watched the videos, like, yeah, you know what, if I could have made a perfect video of what I wanted to say about that topic, it would, it would have looked something like this. And so that's why I know that you're doing it really well. Cause even on things I do know about, and I watch them like, yeah, that if I wanted people to know about something, um, maybe I would have added this, maybe I would have added that, but this covers it. I feel satisfied after watching this. And, uh, it's when we read one of those textbooks and stuff, we only retain about 15 to 30 percent of the information we read anyways and it's usually the more entertaining stuff yeah. so when when you're watching that you don't you you're giving them what what they would have got from that book if they would have read the full thing anyways mm-hmm. and a lot of time i write this gigantic script and it's a lot of edits oh, yeah, a lot of cutting. Removing, yeah, cutting 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 um and I, what i also do is i write multiple drafts <clears throat> so the first draft well i write um well, actually, the first draft is just mostly research. So mm-hmm. I, I'll write down the points, uh, the main points that are in um, the are related to the topic that I'm talking about. But then afterwards, uh, go through the second draft, which is just to write uh, the actual script script that I'm going to read, uh, that I'm going to narrate. And then the third draft, I just go in and uh, uh, write jokes or some uh, emphasize certain points and stuff like that. So I think the third, third draft is mostly that's where the jokes come from. Um, the first and second draft, that's just, hey, this is the information that I want you guys to know. Mm-hmm. And then, right, so the, yeah, so that, that's the important information. I think the jokes are just a side thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, I, I think it's fun for me. <laughs> Yeah. Well, here's That's what right. I'll say. Um, there for the, my, I've shown my friends your videos and what they say is they actually find the jokes to be a, a point of where they're, they're locking in and they're really paying attention. And then they kind of get into that fixated stare 
And then they go, oh, that's funny. And then they're back. And then they go back into that Zoom. And then the timing of it's great because you're, you're focusing. And, and as soon as that joke comes, then you're going, oh, okay, okay, now I'm back in. And then they Zoom. So then that way they, they kind of have like these moments that look like this of going into the, oh, that's you know, so which, that's which gets them through the whole thing. Because yeah. if it was just like one big thing and then there was a joke at the end, then yeah. people would be like, oh, that was random. <laughs> but this, this sort of motion of focusing in, going out, focusing in, going out um, works uh, really quite well in my, in my view. That's interesting. I, I haven't heard someone say that, but yeah. 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 So you want to, you don't want to do too much too, right? Yeah. And that's just a balance. Whole, you don't want a whole video of jokes. Um, uh, if you watch my early videos, I cut them up with skits. I don't know if that worked. Um, I think they kind of, they kind of pulled you out. I like doing the skits because they're, they're real life skits, but they take so much time also. But I don't know if that works. Uh, I don't think that works as well as just uh, telling these small kind of jokes um, in between the actual information. I, I think that the latter is better. Yeah. Because, I, I, you know, the, the, the really difficult part about animation is that you either you do animation or you do live action. And mm -hmm. mixing the two is really, really difficult. Yeah. And I, I don't think I've really seen one that I think it's better if it's okay. You can do it if like 70 to 90% of the video is live action. And then you have like an animates cut, mm -hmm. but then doing like a full cut and then doing a live action thing. Goes, yeah. It's a little bit like, yeah. why? <laughs> and yeah. so well, the thing with that is, <clears throat> well, those are the only videos where I was just messing around. I was, mm -hmm. I just wanted to see what I can do with the videos. And yeah, if, uh, if you look at the videos that were early, they they were pretty random. Um, <laughs> like the, your your skits. Yeah, they're they interspersed really randomly. And is that your like your you wanted to be an actor side coming out? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I went, I wanted to mess around because um, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just uh, it was just fun for me. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't really have a plan, right? Unlike unlike now. So, yeah, I think, uh, but I think that's good. Uh, so I don't, I don't know, a tip for, for people who want to start YouTube. Um, I think at the beginning, you have a lot of freedom to do different things, right? Be creative, because you don't have a brand yet. You don't have uh, followers yet, right? So in the mm -hmm. beginning, do a lot of things. Do, hey, try this, try uh, live action, try, try drawing. Uh, try different kinds of topics, right? And see what sticks. Yeah, 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 that's what you got to do. Even though uh, YouTube is actually a niche game, right? Later on, you're going to have to niche down. But I think in the beginning, you get you don't know what is popular, right? So just go, uh, just throw a lot of stuff on the wall, and uh, eventually, you eventually, if you find something that works, and then then you can you can niche down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that's that's a good strategy uh in general for for uh just be people who want to start youtube mm -hmm. last question then i'm gonna let you go what's your favorite boba flavor boba flavor uh honey boba i guess honey boba yeah yeah you know, but, you know i haven't tried um they had they have like liquor flavor boba really yes they do i haven't tried them though but I will try them and I'll tell you about it. So my my like all-time favorite is actually, so my first time having milk tea was in China like eight years ago, something like that. Hmm. And I had jasmine green tea, green tea like milk tea with um, just basic um, taro. And it was like the best thing in my life. And I've never, I've never found that specific flavor in America because it's, it's always so much sweeter. Yeah, huh. that's right. My first boba was um, uh, a vanilla milkshake with boba. And this, convers this conversation is turning me on. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> I, I love it. I love boba. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try the, the whiskey uh, boba and I'll tell you about it. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. And thank you, everybody, for watching the video. Uh, make sure you go to Linfamy's page. Uh, link is in the description. And watch and learn about all of uh, Japanese history. It's really an, an invaluable resource.
Okay. Well, thanks for having me, Sean. Yeah, this is really nice. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with, uh, with you on more videos. Mm -hmm. Likewise.